Hey everybody, welcome back to the brewery. My name's Adam and this is Adam Makes Beer. And today we are going to be continuing our tutorial look on the CIP process. Something that surprised me when I first started making content, I wasn't sure what people were gonna to wanna to see and what they weren't going to want to see. I get tons of questions on how we deal with our smalls. When I'm talking about smalls, when you work in a brewery, there's all these little Lego pieces essentially teas, tri-clover clamps, gaskets, valves, sight glasses, all these different fittings that we have to use that wouldn't make sense to run during a normal CIP on a tank. So we have to have a way to clean those parts separately and so clean out of place. So here at Sonder, we have this really cool thing. We have a clean out of place pot and you can see it right here. This is made by Quality Tank Solutions. Chase did want me to mention that if you see any welds and you don't like them, he did them, because uh, he did do some modification to this. There's a really unique solution for getting all of the key parts of cleaning checked off the list. We've already talked about time, temperature, flow rate, and chemical concentration when we talk about CIP. And this is exactly what we're dealing with when we work with this COP pot. In the past, I have done a lot of different things for cleaning small parts. Typically, it is a, an overnight soak in either caustic, a PBW, or a powdered brewery cleaner solution, uh, sometimes also soaking in acid. I've done both of those things, but they're all soaks. What's cool about this is that you can actually get the preferred situation where you have turbulence and temperature is taken care of as well because we will we can pull water directly off the 85c hot liquor tank so just a quick overview of this whole thing obviously we have the pot portion in each one of these we have kind of like a crab pot type deal a stainless steel basket that we can sort parts into so that helps us sort when we're doing that Below, down here, we have a pump, and I'll show you this whole rig here in a moment a little bit more in detail, but it pulls liquid off the bottom, up through a couple of options here, up through these arms that go along each side, and we'll talk about those shortly. And then also, each of these arms has some, what looks like support, you know, support connections, but what they really are is they're actually open pipes back into the pot. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, so you can see here, we have all of our shiny stainless in the pot. Right now there is parasitic acid in that pot. And let's zoom in down here. Okay, so this is a little bit more of a close up view of what we're looking at underneath the CIP pot. If you've seen any of my videos before on cleaning or anything like that, a very familiar sight of a pump underneath. And with a pump, we always need a situation where liquid is being fed into the face of the pump and then coming out. Let's see if we can see it over here. So we have a situation where there's a large two inch pipe right here that is coming in and feeding this pump. It then pumps out and then up to this T, this split. And this runs to each one of these rails alongside the CIP pot. Each one of them ends in a valve. And what that enables us to do is, this valve right here, you can see all of our CO2 lines over here. So we can actually strip down our whole CO2 system weekly clean and sterilize it because we can hook those lines up here. It will come out of this valve and then we can rig it back up to this little return elbow and it'll pump back down. Now I mentioned before what seems to be little support beams inside here on both sides are actually where chemical is being pushed back into the CIP pot. The cool thing is this side right here actually angles down and this side over here 
actually angles up. So it encourages going across the pot turbulence, right? Because we know turbulence and flow rate is very important when cleaning. Dude, what? Oh no, my tripod kind of broke. I'll be gentle with it and see if I can limp through this recording. So just like with any other CIP situation, what we do is we'll collect our dirty parts and we'll usually separate them into buckets for gaskets, clamps, and parts. And then when this is dwindled to the point to where we need more, we'll drain the entire pot right here, rinse it, get our parts in. Now we will rinse them soil free going in, okay? Because we don't want a situation where we're throwing a whole bunch of soil into the COP pot in the same way that we pre-rinse tanks when we're cleaning them so we just don't get our caustic all filthy, right? So we will dump the tank, we'll sort all of our parts into their individual baskets, get them in, we'll fill with hot water off of the sterilization loop, which is at 85C. We'll get that turning, that temperature will drop into our appropriate cleaning range. We'll get our caustic circulating for 20 minutes. We'll drop that, we'll rinse it. We'll fill it back up with a blend of hot water or cold water because we try to run our acid at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I know I'm going between Celsius and Fahrenheit on you. So, uh, you know, you can, we'll, we'll get by. We try to run that acid in the 90 degree range and then we'll circulate it on that for 20 minutes, drop the pot, drop the liquid out of the pot, rinse everything down and then go with cold water and parasitic and circulate that. As always, we're titrating all the way along the line to make sure we have the appropriate rate of chemical in there. And beyond that, I think that's really it. I get a ton of questions about this, and I know this is really fancy. Um, and you know, as we've talked about before, you can definitely, there's, there's other solutions for this stuff. Um, but there's a few things in here that, especially for, for breweries our size, this stuff, there's, there's a lot of things that are kind of the Cadillac version of stuff in here. And it's, it, it's a really cool working situation for me. Uh, a lot of labor saving stuff and a lot of time saving stuff. And especially as I get older, it ain't all that bad. This is one of those things. Uh, this is really cool. I don't know if there's a whole lot of them out there. It feels like a little bit of a custom build for me. But anyways, that's about if you have any questions about how we utilize this or how I explain anything, please drop them in the comments below. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're going to maybe be over here or over here. Appreciate you watching.